Financial Planner, Flow on YouTube. What is the real agenda of refusing to recertify the Iran deal? Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now, as we can see, things are heating up in North Korea. We see the USS Theodore Roosevelt. It is heading over towards the Korean Peninsula. And we understand that the cabal is trying to provoke a war in this area. Now, we've had many aircraft carriers sail over to this area. They've gone to Hong Kong. They've gone to other areas. They participated in drills. But again, these ships never really stay around. And of course, the corporate media likes to report that, oh, all these ships are going there for war. Now, once again, North Korea hasn't done anything. They haven't attacked the United States. Congress has not authorized any type of war. And at this point, North Korea is still not preparing for any type of war. And so far, as we can see, the United States really hasn't done anything except sail their ships into these different regions and, you know, stay there for a couple of days and then leave. And of course, the corporate media is building this up to make it seem like we're going into attack North Korea. Now, of course, Trump came out with this statement that, you know, there's going to be this storm coming. And people are wondering, you know, we're at the calm before the storm. What does that mean? What are we going to be doing here? Are we going to war? And once again, is he making people believe that we are doing this? Is he fooling the corporate media? Because as we know, there are talks happening behind the scenes. Now, we could go to war. Yes, if the cabal has some type of an event. And if they do try to do something, maybe the aircraft carriers, maybe the ships down there, are there to monitor what the cabal is doing to make sure and to understand what is going on. Now, we know that Russia and China, they've been monitoring the entire situation of what is going on. They have their satellites. They have their monitoring stations. They know exactly what's going on. So it's going to be very, very difficult for the cabal to pull something off. Now, Trump did something very interesting. He refused to recertify Obama's Iran deal. And we know that Congress was very upset with Obama. And this was done on purpose. Think about this for a second. And we need to understand fully why they put into place this nuclear deal with Iran. One, they kept on saying that Iran was trying to build nuclear weapons. Iran kept on saying, we are not building nuclear weapons. The IEA comes in and they check. We don't see anything. So Russia, China, and the rest of the countries decided to get together. It was the P5 plus one deal. And they decided to put this deal together to make sure that Iran doesn't build nuclear weapons. And the U.S. would release their funds and release sanctions. But of course, Israel does not like this. Israel, you know, is pushing Congress into doing other things like more and more sanctions against Iran. Now, the only reason the United States didn't want Iran to have nuclear weapons. Let's think about this for a second. What does the United States, I'm talking about the cabal, what do they do to those nations that aren't a nuclear power? They go in and they have regime change. We need to go back in time when Wesley C. Clark came out and he said that, yes, the plan is to go into all these Middle Eastern countries, go into Syria, then Iran. If Iran was able to build a nuclear weapon during this period of time, their plan would not succeed. It would be very difficult to invade Iran. So they needed to come up with something where they can disarm or stop what they're doing. Think about North Korea right now. They're trying to build a nuclear weapon, place it on top of a missile to protect themselves from regime change. By having the P5 plus one, it was going to make it a lot easier when Iran's turn was on on deck when, when they were going to go in after they got Syria. Well, guess what? That didn't happen. They couldn't get past Syria. They lost in Syria. Now, Trump refused to recertify Obama's Iran deal. Now, when he refused to do this, it doesn't mean it's canceled. It doesn't mean that everything's just wiped away. 
the decision not to recertify the deal doesn't mean it collapsed immediately. In fact, things stay pretty much as they are while Congress now has 60 days to review the issue and decide, if anything, in what to do. And we see right now that at this point, nothing really has been done. He passed the ball to Congress. What does Congress want to do? Now, maybe he's working with Israel. Maybe Congress is also working with Israel and they're getting ready to start a war with Iran because they want Iran to then go ahead and build a nuclear weapon. I mean, this is what people are thinking. We know that Germany, UK, France, and Russia, they slammed Trump's decision to decertify Iran's deal. They're saying this is ridiculous. Rohini is out there saying that Trump doesn't know nuclear deal isn't unilateral, that one country can't dictate terms of the Iran deal, and that is absolutely true. It has to be all the countries. And there are maybe two agendas here. One, let Iran become a nuclear uh, a nuclear power. And this way, this regime change thing is completely off the board. There's nothing they can do. Same thing with North Korea. If they are able to develop a nuclear weapon, if they're able to place it on top of a missile, guess what? Regime change is going to be very difficult. The other side is maybe the neocons and all these individuals, the cabal, they're trying to start and push a war in Iran. Because remember, the cabal right now is in a tough situation. Nothing they can do in Syria. Their plan to capture all the Middle Eastern countries, then go into Iran completely is falling apart. Trying to provoke something in North Korea is not really happening right now. They might have some type of an event. So we can see there might be two agendas here. One where the cabal has an agenda and Trump has an agenda. And Russia is saying, listen, by the U.S., by Trump saying that he's not going to recertify the deal, this might actually push Iran into developing and restarting their nuclear weapons program. So think about this for a second. That means it would be the United States that was responsible for having Iran build a nuclear weapon and becoming a nuclear power in the region. And once again, we can see that the cabal, it looks like they're trying to push a certain agenda. And I think Trump is pushing a different agenda right now. Now, again, people are going to question this and people are going to say, no way, we're going to war and all this stuff. Remember what happened in Syria after he fired the missiles. Everyone said, we got about 120,000 troops. They're ready to go in. We're going to be invading. Well, guess what? Today, Syria and Russia, they've taken back about 92% of the Syrian territory. The Islamic State has nowhere to run. It's almost about over. They only have about 8% of the country left. They've been pushed out of Iraq. Russia has been showing that the cabal has been working with the Islamic State and everything that the corporate media and everyone, everything that everyone thought didn't happen. And I think what's happening right now is that there's many agendas here and the corporate media is seeing it their way and they're trying to push a war because that's what they're trying to do the central bank wants a war the neocons want a war i mean all these factions want a war and they're trying to push it any way they possibly can and as we can see all these wars didn't happen i mean think about what happened in north korea with ships that were supposed to be heading to north korea the corporate media was you know, reporting on it, saying, oh, these ships are heading there. Looks like we're going to have a showdown. And the ship really never left the port and never really went over to North Korea. That whole thing was completely fake, phony, and false. And they didn't know where all the ships were. And right now they're reporting that, yes, ships are heading there. But what always happens is the ships head towards that area. They pull into Hong Kong. They pull, they pull into Guam. They're not really sitting outside of North Korea and their whole agenda completely falls apart. Remember, their agenda is to create the idea and to create the illusion that we're going to war, that we're going to start, that Trump is getting ready to push the button to have war. And I don't think this is going to happen. I think they're working behind the scenes. I think they're playing the corporate media. I think they're playing with the cabal. And the cabal is 
basically on its last legs. Doesn't mean they still don't have power. Doesn't mean they're going to try, they're not going to try an event or something, but it looks like, you know, there's a game still being played right now. So if you really look at this, Trump just passed everything to Congress. Let Congress decide what they're going to do with this. And we'll have to wait and see what happens because right now, nothing is happening. And again, the United States can't dictate how this deal goes. There's other countries involved and major players like Russia, like China. We see the corporate media hasn't let up yet. They're still pushing the idea that North Korea is continually escalating cyber attacks. And they're saying that North Korea doesn't care because they have little fear of retaliation. They can do whatever they want. They can cyber attack anything they want. And they're pu still pushing the idea that, you know, they cyber attacked South Korea. They got the plans. They got the war plans. They got the assassination plans. They are sending emails out for uh, into uh, those who work for the power grid, these phishing emails, trying to bring down the power grid. And they're continually using and going back in time, saying that, see, North Korea was able to hack into Sony. And they're continually pushing this idea that North Korea is getting ready to do all of these things, which is kind of ridiculous because why would they do this? What would be the motive? To be bombed? To be invaded? It makes no sense. And all of this is propaganda to push the idea that we're going to war. This is what they really want. Not saying that we're not going. I mean, they might have an event. They might be able to convince Congress. They might be able to convince Trump. And we might be going to war if they can pull out, pull off an event of all events. But right now, there's still a battle going on. And the cabal and the corporate media, they will not let up. They will never let up. They will never admit that, yes, we're not going to war. Even with Russian collusion, they still haven't admitted anything. They're still pushing the same agenda. They will do this until the very end, until they can't do it anymore. But one thing is for sure. The entire system is coming down, no matter if we go to war or not. The economy is breaking apart. The economy is in a huge amount of trouble. And they're keeping the illusion alive the illusion will disappear. And this is why you're going to need to be ready and prepared because the time is coming. It's getting closer and all the indicators are pointing to a recession, depression, and it will hit and people are going to be shocked.